Okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you know, I, I have two Captain Willards. One's the uh, 44, $2,600 44 version, and I have the $1,200 uh, 42 version. Came back from uh, Seiko headquarters, had to get a whole new uh, movement in it after 13 months of wear. And uh, so I have both, and it just begs the question, is the 44 version worth three times the amount of the 42 version? And so, you know, uh, the uh, the SLA uh, 051, you could actually call it the uh, the Umera Explorer because it is named after the, uh, the the famous Japanese adventurer Naomi Umera. So I guess we can just call it that, just so we don't get the two confused as we talk about it. This is the SLA 051, and uh, it's 44 wide, 13 thick, 49 north to south, 8L35 movement has superior accuracy, it's rated around 10 seconds a day. Uh, mine might be five seconds a day, I don't know. I've, I've never lost any time on it, it's ridiculous. I definitely noticed the, the accuracy difference in this and my other Seikos that I've owned. This is the highest uh, tier movement I've ever had with a Seiko and it, and it does spoil you. It's a 50 hour reserve. And then if you look at the, uh, the 42, with the uh, black dial, it's uh, 42.7 wide, but that pudginess definitely makes it play more like a 43. Really good uh, size distribution on this. Uh, north to south is 46.7, thickness is 13. The 6R35 movement, which Mimo told me is a good movement, even though I had to get mine replaced after 13 months. It will lose, according to the Seiko site, up to 25 seconds a day. That's considered normal. And don't be surprised if you lose that much. Most people tell me they're losing about 20 seconds a day on these uh, 6R35 movements. And uh, you do get a 70-hour reserve, but, uh, you know, a lot of uh, mechanical watch guys, they don't care if they lose 20, 25 seconds a day. They're used to it. Uh, so the obvious differences are uh, the size... The bezel insert on the Umera Explorer is steel while it's aluminum on the uh, on the 42 Willard. You got a gray dial on the 44, a black dial on the 42. I mean, what's interesting is, I don't know if you can pick it up on the camera, but the case polish on the 44 makes the case slightly darker looking. And the loom is slightly better on the 44. Fascinating, the, the comforter's both the same, both very comfortable. I don't feel them uh, on the wrist. They're very comfortable. And so the question is, um, can, you know, can you, can you justify spending three times on the 44? And I think if you answer yes to the following questions, then you might want to save your money and get the 44. Number one, do you prefer the superior accuracy of the 8L35 movement? You may be someone who feels comforted by the superior accuracy. After all, you know, you love mechanical watches. You might as well get the best uh, version, the best movement you can get in the 44. Do you prefer the superior build quality of the 44 in terms of the bezel, bracelet, and movement? And uh, that's interesting, you know. <sighs> Having both, I do notice that the uh, it the more expensive 44 really highlights some of the compromises in the 42 and it makes me think that the 42 should be priced lower more like 850 bucks you know you can get the the Seiko Sumo which has the same movement for 850 sometimes 800 I've seen them for 750 up oh, there goes my focus thanks a lot McMahon all right so the uh, the question is, uh, you know, are you going to like that uh, compromise quality? I mean, I, I'm starting to think that for a type of a diver watch, 2600 is about as low as you can go if you don't want any compromises. I wanted to say Citizen, but Citizen doesn't make um, automatic uh, dressy divers. Uh, if they did, you know, their $1,000 uh, mechanical watches. Uh, they have the build quality of watches that cost three times that much. So Citizen would be in the game if they made a diver 
kind of like the Captain Willard. And then, of course, you know, there's argument, is this, is this Umer Explorer truly a diver watch? Well, it is based on the turtle case, so that's a diver. But if you, if you don't want to take any risks, just get the true diver, get the MM300, and uh, which is a uh, just a no-doubter. I was struggling with the bling, <laughs> and then I wore it to a family event on Saturday, and I was saying, you know what, dude? It's it's good bling. There's bad bling and good bling. Don't don't lump all bling in the same category. Of course, my wife slapped my hand several times because I was making sure that my wrist shot with this watch was getting in all the uh, family photos. So I got, I uh, all right back to the. Uh, the Willards, everyone's going, I don't want to see the Willards anymore. I just want to see the MM300. Come on, McMahon. Get in the game, bro. Okay, that's glare, bro. Okay, you lost everything. You've lost. Okay, it's over. The video's over. You're in glare world, buddy. I don't know how that happened all of a sudden. But, uh, all right, I'm just going to hold it. I'm upset. So, uh, it, it's, this is more of the pure diver of the two. Willard, so maybe that's a good counter argument to spend less. Uh, the other thing is, you know, even though the 44 is better in overall quality, it's still a very good watch. I'm not, I'm not dumping this. I'm just saying eh, it feels like it's about worth 850. You might not mind 850. I'm going to say something else in defense of the 42. I'm not going to lie to you. The size, shape. And design, I think this has more charm than the 44. That squat, pudgy uh, base of the case. Actually, I prefer the way this looks in many ways to the 44. And this just screams Captain Willard tool watch. And maybe that's why you're getting a Willard. Maybe you want a good everyday tool watch that you're not going to worry about polished surfaces and such. And... Uh, so a lot of you are saying, well, McMahon, how could you have both? That's quite a splurge. Well, here's the thing. I only have four watches, so it's really not that big of a splurge. I've got the, uh, the Citizen um, in the far north here. i got the Citizen uh, uh, 1982 Recreation Echo Drive, which is funny. It's my biggest watch in terms of... Uh, the bezel width at 47 but it's my most comfortable because it's made of this uh, Duratec titanium and then it's more like a G-Shock square the way there's really no north to south so it's my most comfortable and then on the uh, on the strap code bracelet I've got the comfort levels at a very good uh, rate on the MM300 this watch is just ridiculous you put this on and you kind of uh, you know <laughs> You're, you feel like you're bench pressing 500. It's definitely a hero watch, the MM300. And uh, the, this 44 wheeler is more low key. It's gorgeous. And then uh, the 42 wheeler. I, I mean, I could recommend all four of these. If you don't, if you want to just not have any of these watches, one go, go get an Omega Planet Ocean. But uh, I don't think I need an Omega Planet Ocean right now. The MM300 is fine. So uh, I hope that helps answer your question. But uh, I'm, I'm keeping both because uh, I don't have a very big watch collection. I think I can uh, get away with having four watches. All right, ladies and gentlemen, tell me what you think. Until next time, I'm out.